not have an imaginary friend. I had a friend who had an imaginary donkey. Well, there you go. For a long time. And then his uh, older brother flushed him down the toilet. It was very traumatic, I recall. But it was those kinds of things that struck a chord with all of us that it's just something that a lot of people have. If they didn't have an imaginary friend themselves, they know someone who did. And so... But more importantly, we all have that inner voice, those, those yeah. moments of doubt, that, that, that dialogue that we have ongoing with each other, you know, just in our own heads, and that's really, at the end of the day, what Mary is. So, right. you know, it may not be in the character form, but we, we all have those moments where, like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> so I'm curious, was there any debate or back and forth in the studio between Mary either being essentially a person in a costume versus animated? Uh, no, there never was, because they, they, this all started... Um, with a general, I had seen Patrick's short film Feast, and Patrick being an animator, um, we just had a general meeting as, as I have with people, and I said, do you have any ideas for television? And he said, I always want to do a show about an imaginary friend, so given that that was the genesis of it, it was never a question because Patrick's background is entirely in animation, and then when Adam Goldberg and David came in, it sort of all took shape from there. <laughs> I don't have to right oh, now. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of Rachel Gretsch. Uh, so uh, wait. Yeah. So, uh, so talk about the, the process of choosing her as the right voice for. Um, yeah. Well, it was you know it was. <laughs> I, I think the hardest part was finding the the, 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 the actress who could voice Mary and bring it to life in a whole new way. Yeah. And we listened to. I mean, you know, once you put out a casting call, this basically says, hey, you could play it and you, you could come in and do sort of. Um, to an ADR room and work sort of like half a day a week for, for a whole episode fee. Um, we got so many submissions from all sorts of actresses who normally you'd have to really chase after. And so we listened to hundreds. And blindly listened to them. Yeah. Like really, um, you know, we made a, an offer to a couple people and actually, without naming names, hired one or two people. And then when you when you did it, you looked at it and you went, it just doesn't work. Not that they weren't great actors, the voices just didn't work. And so then we said, okay, we're not going to go with names anymore. We're just going to listen to people's voices blindly. And normally the way you do this, and it was making Patrick a little crazy, is that you record it before you actually shoot it. Um, and we did it the opposite, meaning they had to yes. animate. TV to, schedule. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of did it backwards. But we were, it was the last piece of the puzzle to come together, and then when we heard it, it was like, whoever was like, that is, that's the person. And it was there wasn't even anyone close. There was no debate. Once once we heard Rachel, we knew she was it. And and sure enough, she made it. She really brought it to life in a way that nobody else could. And I met her once. <laughs> sort of a little bit of an exaggeration, but not much of one. She records in New York, and we're in L.A. Yeah. Patrick said to us that uh, maybe down the road you would also present uh, Ben's uh, imaginary friend or present you know, other characters in such a case. You know, we've talked about a lot of different scenarios of, of what you do. This does the kid have an imaginary friend? Can the kid see Mary? I mean, I think that when when if we're lucky enough to go season two, that David and the writers will spend a lot of time. We all will, and just sort of figure out okay. Is there a world to expand? How do you expand the world? What's the world that we're going to expand into? And really, the, you know, to echo something that Doug said earlier, the show is less about imaginary friends and more about the sort of internal conflict we all have in trying to live our lives to the fullest. So Alice wants to be a single career woman and with all the great things that, have, that sort of go along with it, and now she's met this guy with kids and is debating about whether or not she wants to be in this family and Mary is really representative of like that sort of dialogue she has within herself about what to do next and how best to navigate this and retain her identity and still have this sort of full life. So for that from that sense, like one imaginary friend really seems to serve our purposes best because that's sort of what it really represents. But how many people can see that imaginary friend? <laughs> So that was kind of dovetailing into what I was going to ask, roughly about how far out have you mapped out stories uh, at this point? Well, since it's based somewhat on David's own experience... We know where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> well, we basically... Uh, we have nine episodes there through the end of the season, and we see Alice, um, uh, you know, sort of walk that fine line of integrating herself in this family. She and Mary figure that out. And we also bring all the other characters to life a little bit further. You know, the pilot spends a lot of time setting up that relationship. We get to spend more time in series exploring the kids and Ben and sort of how they feel about this new woman in their lives and how that all works. So we just really, what we have nicely is sort of like watching the development of this relationship as anyone gets to know each other better. 
and see how it progresses. I'll take care of everybody else. I love this picture of Steven, by the way. I'm just going to lean against the wall. Yeah. Lift my arm you look up. as sexy as he yeah, does. I, yeah, I, mean, I love this picture of me because. By the way, look how old you are. Look how young you are. I know. There's no gray. That's, oh, that's like. I don't know when this was taken, but there's no gray in my beard whatsoever. Yeah. That was your uh, high school graduation? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> that was just yesterday. What are you yeah. talking about? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks. 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 Thanks.